I often get asked why I prefer a red dot and a magnifier over a variable power optic for two gun action challenge style events. So I'm going to use some archive match video to show you why I prefer a red dot and a magnifier over a variable. Quite simply put, the benefits of magnification are dramatically outweighed by the benefits of unlimited eye relief. Unlimited eye relief allows me to quickly get behind the sight and as soon as the dot dances across the target send the shot. Not having to get into an eye box from awkward positions such as those seen on this VTAC barricade makes it dramatically faster to get the dot on target and send the shot versus using a variable where I have to get in the eye box, see the reticle, then send the shot. A variable optic on one power with daylight bright red dot reticle still takes longer to get a sight picture through than a red dot alone with no eye relief from these awkward positions. In these two video clips you've just seen, I'm shooting at the same size target at relatively the same distance and you can see how much longer it takes me to acquire the sight picture through the variable on one power. Three gun stage designs tend to favor getting behind the sights and staying behind the sights and sending a bunch of rounds, whether at close range or at distance. Two gun action challenge match style stage designs tend to favor making a rapid sight acquisition, engaging one to three targets, then moving and doing something else. While the time difference between acquiring the sights with a red dot versus a variable doesn't make that much of a difference in most three gun matches, because of the repetitive nature of reacquiring the sights in two gun action challenge match style stages, that difference can add up substantially. I'm easily 10% faster than myself using a red dot at these type of events versus a variable. Variable power optics do have their place. If I'm shooting an event where most of the shooting is going to be between 100 to 500 yards versus close range, I prefer a variable because of the range of magnification it offers over a red dot and a magnifier. For events where 90% of the shooting is at 100 yards or less and there might be some shooting out to 300 yards with some small targets intermixed, I prefer the red dot and the magnifier. The red dot is simply faster under a wider range of circumstances than any variable power scope can be. Now that you know why I use a red dot and a magnifier, I'm going to discuss some of the magnifiers I've used in the past. The first magnifier I used was the original Aimpoint magnifier around 2010 to 2011. The problem with this magnifier is that it did not have adjustable focus which made it difficult to use with my prescription lenses and I'm sure many other people with vision issues struggled with these as a result. These magnifiers didn't come with mounts so it was up to the end user to purchase a mount to go with it whether an Aimpoint factory mount or an aftermarket mount like the LaRue mount I used. These mounts could cost $100 to $200 driving up the price of the entire package quite a bit. In 2014 I used a Samson magnifier that came with one of their flip to the side mounts this magnifier did have an adjustable diopter and it was a big improvement over the earlier Aimpoint magnifier that I used. The only downside to this system was that it took up a lot of space. You can see how bulky it is on top of my rifle in this photo. In 2017, I got an Aimpoint 3XC magnifier and mounted it in a LaRue mount. This has been my primary magnifier I've been using for the past two years. This magnifier had a relatively reasonable cost of about $300 and it did have an adjustable diopter so I could focus it to work optimally with my corrective lenses. The optical clarity of the Aimpoint 3XC magnifier wasn't the greatest but it seemed acceptable for the cost at the time. It does have a bit of a yellow tint and it could seem distorted depending on the angle at which I was engaging targets in relation to the sun. The other problem I had with this setup was the angle at which the LaRue mount put it when not in use. It's right by the ejection port and you can see the brass strikes on the side of the mount and the edge of the lens. And while no brass ever hit the lens itself, the angle allowed the oil and debris from the action itself to coat the front of the lens and it requires regular cleaning. I also briefly used a Vortex VMX3 magnifier seen here on my orange Gila Monster rifle. With an MSRP of $250 and the fact it comes with a mount, it is the cheapest of all the magnifiers I've used substantially cheaper than the Aimpoint 3XC magnifier with its LaRue mount. So keeping that price in mind, you get what you pay for. The glass isn't very clear, and the mount itself isn't the greatest, and people who seriously use these things would often replace the mounts with ones from LaRue that locked up more solid and were easier to remove from the rifle when you didn't want the magnifier in place. In this photo, you can also see the Vortex Micro Magnifier for a size comparison between it and the original VMX3. There's really no comparison between these two magnifiers. The Micro 3X magnifier is better than the original VMX3 in every way. 
And in fact, I'll say the Micro 3X is better than any previous red dot magnifier I've used, period. I'm going to go over the features of the Micro 3X magnifier. First up, it comes with a throw lever mount that has a positive lock on it. So you have to disengage this tab before you can uh, disengage the throw lever, which is a nice feature. It can't vibrate or work itself loose under recoil. The mount can be configured for left or right-handed use. I, of course, have it configured for left-handed use. All you have to do to configure it for right-handed use is undo those two screws, flip it around, and the magnifier will flip to the right. The screw I'm zoomed in on here allows you to tighten the mount to fit your particular Picatinny rail better. Optimally, all Picatinny rails would be exactly the same, but there is some variance, particularly if you have Cerakoting on your upper, like I do on this one. So you, it does allow you to tighten it down so the optic does not rattle back and forth under recoil. The flip to the side feature is very solid, despite the fact it doesn't have any sort of positive locking mechanism that requires a button to disengage or twist or anything like that. You simply just grab it, flip it to the side, flip it back to center, and it doesn't rattle around in the mount at all, as I've seen with other lesser optic magnifier mounts. The Micro 3X magnifier does have an adjustable diopter, which is a particularly important feature for anyone wearing corrective lenses like I do. You can focus the lens so that you have a clear image with your corrective lenses in place and making sure that the dot is crisp and clear. If your dot's fuzzy, the magnifier doesn't really help you that much, so the ability to focus it in and have a clear sight picture is very important. The other thing you can take into consideration with this adjustable diopter is if your prescription isn't that bad, you can actually adjust the diopter to be focused without your corrective lenses in place. So I don't have that bad of a prescription and I can actually adjust it so that I could see through it clearly without my glasses. And that's a nice thing in case my glasses became lost or damaged in the field. What you're seeing here is the screws that allow you to center the magnifier relative to your optic. So if you see the dot off to the low right, you can adjust these screws to bring it back to center. Now one of the nice things about this particular magnifier versus others is that these are click adjustable. So if you're swapping this magnifier between multiple guns, you could remember or write down how many clicks you need to change it to be centered for that particular gun. All of the other magnifiers I've used don't have click adjustments like this for the centering, so you'd kind of just have to remember how many rotations with a screwdriver if you were swapping it between optics. The biggest advantage that the Micro 3X has over other magnifiers I've used and that I really can't show you well on video is that the optical quality is superior to all of them. Most of the other ones I've used have a yellowish or bluish tint looking through them or can even be as bad as looking through a dirty fishbowl, but the glass on the Micro 3X magnifier is incredibly clear and it's as good as a mid-range variable optic like the Viper PST that I typically use for shooting three gun matches. The one downside to the Micro 3X magnifier is something that's common to all 3X magnifiers I've used in that the eye relief is short. For me to comfortably use the Micro 3X magnifier, it needs to be mounted all the way at the back of the upper receiver, which precludes the use of backup iron sights in the traditional location. They already supply it with a lower one-third co-witness spacer, so you can use it with taller optic mounts. So a longer lower one-third co-witness spacer that allows the mount to be further forward and the optic further back is an easy fix for this situation if they were to make it. Rather than talk about how well the mini magnifier worked, I'm going to show you how well it worked at the recent Rio Black Rifle match where I used it on my KE-15 shooting team rifle in Stealth Division. Stealth Division is basically open division but limited to 30 round magazines. Most competitors in this division will use a variable power optic, either a 1 to 4 or 1 to 6, with some sort of offset red dot. I'm using the Vortex Crossfire Gen 2 with 50,000 hour battery life and the Mini Magnifier. So it's at a bit of a disadvantage versus other competitors in this division, but I haven't typically found that to be a liability at this particular venue. Stealth Division rules were updated for this year so that you can now take the bipod on and off as you wish. It was previously required to leave it on the whole time if you were going to use it at all. My rifle is zeroed at 50 yards with 62 grain Magtech ammunition. I don't differentiate between close range and long range targets when I'm using 62 grain ammo. I always zero with the magnifier in place and recommend that you do the same. I do this to avoid any point of aim versus point of impact shift between magnified and unmagnified. If there is a point of impact shift, I would prefer that it occur on the unmagnified mode because of the distances that I'm likely to be engaging targets at, making it not matter nearly as much as engaging targets at distance. 
So always zero with it in place. And then you know that you're on at distance when you are actually using it. And now here's my complete match video from the Rio Black Rifle match held December 7th, 2019. This stage has three arrays of two targets at 100, 200, and 300 yards. Because of the distances, I'm going to shoot the whole stage with the magnifier in place. From this first position, you can see me shooting from a reverse kneeling position where my strong side knee makes contact with my shooting elbow for stability, and I'm pulling into the corner of the prop for maximum stability as well. On this side, the target order is reversed, starting at 300 yards. I'm using reverse kneeling here as well, but I'm not as stable because I'm sitting on top of the prop rather than having the ability to pull into anything. When I'm done at this position, I move back to the original position and the target order engagement is back to 100, 200, then 300 yards. I'm first place in stealth division, giving me 100 match points. Overall, I'm fourth with 93.72% of the winner's score. This stage has three targets at 375 yards and one target at 390 yards. Targets 1 through 3 at 375, target 4 at 390. On this stage, I have to shoot target 1, then 4, then 2, then 4, then 3, then 4, before moving on to the next position. This stage having the furthest distance targets is where I notice the biggest difference in the clarity of the optic seeing the targets downrange versus my other magnifiers I've used at this event. It was much easier to see the target against the backdrop and consequently send more accurate shots at those targets. From this position I have to shoot target 4, then 3, then 4, then 2, then 4, then 1. The strobe lights on these targets really help speed up the feedback process for both the shooter and the range officer and eliminate any doubt whether a target was hit. The challenge for me on these stages is balancing how much time I want to spend stabilizing versus just sending the shot. I'm first in stealth division, giving me 100 match points. Overall, I'm second with 87.61% of the winner's score. I begin the stage with the magnifier in place to shoot two smaller square targets at about 60 yards. I flip the magnifier out of the way to engage all the close range paper. I opt to engage all the close range paper from one position, shooting at partials rather than moving to get full presentations. Two hits anywhere or one A zone neutralizes all the paper. From this position, I'm not very stable on the first two targets, then I settle in and go one for one on the second two targets. I think this stage is a good example of how easy it is to flip the magnifier in and out of place. It's arguably faster than dialing a variable up and down. I'm first in stealth division, giving me 100 match points. Overall, I'm fourth with 92.61% of the winner's score. This stage begins with two arrays of diamond targets at about 90 yards. Once I'm done on these targets, I'll flip the magnifier out of the way and jump down into the pit to engage some close range paper. Reload on the way up, flip the magnifier back in place, get into position to engage these two diamonds off to the left, then I'll switch back over to the right side of the tower to engage one target at 200 yards, then the array of three diamonds out at 90. I'm first in stealth division, giving me 100 match points. I'm 6th overall with 78.67% of the winner's score. On this stage for the heck of it, I decide to go for all headshots. A single hit above the neckline of the target counts as neutralization. This is in fact slower than just sending two rounds at the body as fast as you can slap the trigger. But I thought it was a good opportunity to practice my bore offset 
I do in fact neutralize all the targets without any problems. After I clear the paper, I have to transition to the next bay without breaking the 180 with my rifle. As I enter the next bay, I slap the magnifier into place, reload, and move into position to engage three targets at 300 yards. In the truck bed, I have to deal with some bounce factor, but I make short work of the seal at 300 yards using the magnifier. Because I decided to slow myself down and go for headshots, I'm second in stealth division with 91.97% of the winner's score. Overall, I'm 11th with 80.65% of the winner's score. In the final results, I'm first in stealth division with 491.97 points out of 500 possible. Overall, I'm fourth with 97.21% of the winner's score. I'd say this is a successful test of the Vortex Micro 3 power magnifier. It more than allowed me to hold my own against other competitors using variable optics in a match format that tends to favor them. The Vortex Micro 3X red dot magnifier truly is the best red dot magnifier I've used to date. If you shop around online, you can find them for under $300 currently, making it an incredible value for all the features it comes with. The optical clarity is not surpassed by anything else in its price range, and everything the mount offers makes it much more usable than buying another magnifier and a supplementary mount from another company. Vortex definitely has a winner on their hands with the Micro 3X magnifier, and I will personally be picking up another one that will have a permanent home on one of my rifles.